My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, there is one goal that each and every object of creation strives to achieve throughout its, ex its existence. Whether that object be animal or man, jinn or ins, male or female, Muslim or kafir, it doesn't matter. It is but one goal. That is the ultimate goal of each and every object of creation. And it is the same goal. And that is the goal of happiness, of tranquility, serenity, peace. This is what each and every object of existence, each and every human being, Muslim or Kafir, wishes to achieve. And you find that every act of his throughout the day and night is aimed towards this goal. What will make me happier? What will make me self-content? What will make me arrive at an inner feeling of tranquility and peace? However, amazingly, even though the goal is the same, even though the ultimate destination might be the same for all of mankind, the roads and the paths that they use to try to arrive at this goal are very, very diverse. So you find some segments of society believe that happiness is achieved through the accumulation of wealth, of material possessions, so you find they have dedicated their entire lives to amass and hoard as large of a fortune as they can. They will try to get the best of all jobs, drive the best of all cars, have the largest of houses. And they think that this will bring, bring them the happiness that they desire. Other segments of society believe that happiness and tranquility will be achieved as a result of power, of being able to control society. So you find that they have dedicated their lives in climbing the political ladder, trying their best to get to the top. Yet others believe that happiness is achieved through fame, recognition, that he be famous wherever he go, he be recognized amongst the people. Yet others believe that happiness will be achieved by satisfying one's each and every sensual desires and lusts. So they go after women and wine and drugs and alcohol and they succumb to each and every temptation that comes to them. And the majority of mankind, the majority of mankind try to achieve happiness by a combination of these factors. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yet, if we were to ask the people who have achieved the heights in these respective fields, the richest, the most powerful, the most fortunate, the most recognized and famous people. If we were to ask those whom the average person of society looks up to as having reached the height of these respective ladders, we ask them, have you finally arrived at this happiness? You have spent 15, 20, 30, 40 years collecting money, becoming powerful, becoming famous. Have you arrived? Do you feel this tranquility that you were seeking for the last few decades? And if they were honest with you, if they were honest with you, then not one of them could truthfully respond, yes, we have arrived at this destination. Each one will say, no, it is yet to come. I need more money. I need to be more powerful. I need to be more famous. Not yet. But you don't even have to ask them. Statistics speak louder than their words. Do you know that the highest suicide rates in any society are not found amongst the poor? are not found amongst the people who are unknown and not famous. They are always the highest amongst the rich and the elite of society. Divorce rates, their run-ins with the law, drug problems, rehabilitation problems, they are always rampant in the rich and elite of society. Those whom others think have reached the heights, and yet in reality, they are far worse off than they were when they started their journey to come to the top. Allah describes them very beautifully in the Qur'an. They eat and are drink, they are merry, just like the animals are. Just like animals, when the animals wake up, their only purpose of existence is to eat and drink and be merry. They don't have a higher purpose of life. So too are human beings who think that happiness will be achieved through anything that this world has to offer. In one verse Allah says, they are like animals, nay, they are worse than animals. 
Because they had been blessed with a mind. They had been blessed with an intellect. But they did not use it for the sake of Allah. So they became worse than the animals who were not blessed with an intellect in the first place. So the question arises, my dear brothers and sisters, what then is the road to spiritual happiness? How can a person arrive at this tranquility that is sought by all of the creation? Let us turn to the Quran and Sunnah. Let us see what Allah and His Messenger have to say about this topic. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, O you who believe, this is verse directed to me and you, pay attention to it. O you who believe, Istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul, respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger. Ida da'akum lima yuhyikum, when they call you to that which will give you your life. To that which will give you the life that you seek. Respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger. And when you respond, you will be given life. Allah is not speaking to the dead. He is speaking to people who are alive, who are walking and eating and drinking on the face of this earth. But they are spiritually dead. Spiritually they are dead. So Allah is saying, when you respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger, when you obey Whatever Allah tells you to do, whatever the Prophet ﷺ tells you to do, in this is your life. In this is where you will feel the life that you desire. Scholars have differed about what this call is. Some have said that the reference to the call is to the Qur'an. Others have said Islam. Others have given other responses. But the fact of the matter is that each and every commandment from Allah and His Messenger is a means of attaining life is a means of attaining happiness and tranquility for us. Because the verse is general. Whatever Allah commands you to do, whatever the Prophet ﷺ commands you to do, in that will be your life. We can understand from this verse that the person who rejects this call, he is spiritually dead. He is not alive because Allah has not given him his life. And this is exactly what Allah says in the Qur'an. Allah says in the Quran, أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ Give the example of the one who was dead and we resurrected him, brought him back to life. The reference here is not to a physically dead person. The reference here is to a person who is not worshipping Allah. And then Allah guided him to start worshipping him. So Allah calls the person who is not worshipping Allah dead. أَوَمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا Give the example of the one who was dead. He had no life. He had no tranquility. He had no purpose. We gave him his life by guiding him to Islam, by guiding him to the worship of Allah, by making him amongst the pious. We gave him a light. And by this light, he walks amongst the people. Is his example the same as the one who is wandering in the darkness, never to exit from it? So in this verse, Allah gives us two parables. Two themes, the theme of life and death. He who worships Allah is alive. He who refuses to worship Allah, he is dead, even if he eats and drinks and is walking on the face of this earth. He is spiritually dead. The other imagery, the other parable is that of lightness and darkness. He who worships Allah has been blessed with a light. What is the purpose of a light, my dear brothers and sisters? The purpose of a light is to guide you from point A to point B. It will tell you how to get there in the shortest amount of time, without tripping, without falling. So when a person is blessed with a spiritual light, he knows he has a destination, Jannah. He knows how to get there, Surat al-Mustaqim. He knows the constitution to follow, the Qur'an. He has a light. As for the person who denies all of this, he has no purpose, no path, no constitution. He has no light. He is wandering in the darkness, as Allah says beautifully, following his desires, every day waking up, having no purpose to life. And he is never going to exit from it unless Allah wills otherwise. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us the path to happiness. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكْرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَا نُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا He who does good, whether he is male or female, man or woman, and he has iman, then of a certainty, we are going to give him hayatan tayyibah, a sweet life, a beautiful life, a tranquil life. 
You ask, how can I live a good life in this world before the hereafter? How can I avoid the troubles and the worries of this dunya? Listen to the Quran. He who does good and he has Iman, whether he is male or female, then of a certainty he will be given a sweet life, a beautiful life, a good life. In this world, of course the hereafter, but even in this world, the mu'min will be granted a life unlike that of the kafir and the non-Muslim. As Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ Those who are pious and righteous, they will continually be enjoying each and every blessing from Allah. Na'im is the plural of ni'mah, meaning every blessing. The blessing of health, the blessing of wealth, the blessing of iman, the blessing of family, the blessing of children. Every blessing in this world and the hereafter. إِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ وَإِنَّ الْفُجَّارِ As for the evil people, لَفِي جَحِيمٍ They will be in the fire of hell. يَصْلَوْنَهَا يَوْمَ الدِّينَ They will enter the fire of hell on the day of judgment. Notice here, ponder over this verse, my dear brothers and sisters. Notice that when Allah talks about the believers, He does not put a time condition. He says the pious will continually enjoy Allah's blessings. No time restraint. Then He says the, the, dis, the disbelievers, the impious, they will enter the fire of hell on the day of judgment. Meaning that their ultimate punishment will be reserved for the hereafter. In this world, they might enjoy some things of this life. But the believer, his enjoyment is not restrained or constrained to any time. His enjoyment will be eternal in this life and in the hereafter. And yet another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى He who believes and gives of his money and does good, فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We will make things easy for him. We will make things easy for him. Meaning that no job will he take except that Allah will bless him in that job. No money will he earn except that Allah will give him all that he wants of that money. Baraka in that money. His marriage will be a success. His children will be a comfort to the eyes. His dunya and akhirah will be guaranteed. Everything will be made easy for him. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, He who gives and does good, everything will be made easy for him. وَأَمَّا مَنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى As for him who was miserly, who was stingy with his money, and he thought that he had no need to worship Allah. Istaghna over here means... He had no need for religion. I don't have time to pray. He has no need to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and he denies the hereafter. Then, فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْعُسْرَى We will make everything difficult for him. Everything. He might have the biggest bank account, but in his heart he will be the poorest person. He might drive the largest car, live in the fanciest of mansions, but inside of him will be a living hell, a jaheem inside of him. His money and wealth will only cause more grief rather than bring him comfort and blessings. Everything will be made difficult for him because he has disbelieved in Allah. He has refused to worship Allah. In yet another verse, and this is an important verse, because Allah directed it to Adam. When Adam was sent down to this earth, what did Allah tell our father Adam? What advice did he give him when Adam was being sent down? Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى He who follows my guidance, anyone of any generation, any nation, any prophet, anyone who follows my guidance, each in his own time, فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى Then he will not go astray nor will he taste shaqawa, which means grief and anguish. He will not taste real anguish. He will not taste pain. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ As for he who turns away from my remembrance, from my worship, he will live a miserable and wretched life. In this world, he will live a miserable life. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And on the day of judgment, we will resurrect him blind. He who turns away from my worship. Notice Allah does not say he who disbelieves in me. Because there are many who believe in Allah but refuse to worship Him. They are too busy to take time out of their schedules for the five prayer. They love their money too much to give it in zakah. Their schedule does not permit them to go for hajj or umrah. The fast of Ramadan is found too difficult for them. He who turns away from remembering me, 
will live a miserable and wretched life. He will never attain the tranquility and the happiness that is eternally besought of all of mankind. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ponder over the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. When a problem used to afflict him, what would he do? Where would he turn to? When a problem afflicts us, what do we do, my dear brothers and sisters? If we've had a difficult day at work, many of us come home and we turn the television on because we think that that difficulty will go away. It will drown away with the television. Or we might turn to other things, social talk, backbiting, visiting other people. Things which might be halal, might be makru, might be haram. What did the Prophet ﷺ used to turn to after facing a problem, an adversary? The Prophet ﷺ, as Aisha narrates, any time he was concerned about something, فَزِعَ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ He would rush, rush to stand up in prayer. Prayer, salah. And that is why he would say, أَرِحْنَا بِهَا يَا Bilal, O Bilal, hurry up, we want to taste the comfort of the prayer. أَرِحْنَا بِهَا We want to taste the sweetness of the prayer. Why are you delaying? Say the iqama. As the Prophet ﷺ said, جُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ Verily, the sweetness of my eyes, the comfort of this world, to me, has been made in the prayer. This is how I attain the tranquility that I need. Contrast this to us and our lives. Where do we turn to? What do we try to use to get rid of that evil or that problem that we have? Do we turn to Allah? Do we turn to salah, pray, give zakah, fast, make dua? Or do we turn to this dunya? Notice the contrast between us and the Prophet ﷺ. The prayer has been made the sweetness of my eye. This is what would give him comfort. This is what would grant him solace. This is how he would obtain his tranquility. Stand up in prayer. Al-Hasan al-Basri, a very famous student of the companion, he said, he said, seek happiness. Seek happiness in one of three things. In one of three things. Seek happiness in the recitation of the Quran and in dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal and in the salah, in the prayer. If you wish to seek happiness, these are the three places you will find them in. And then he said, if you do not find happiness in these three matters, then know that the door to happiness has been shut for you. You will not find it anywhere else. The door to happiness has been closed. There is no other way to obtain the tranquility that you desire except through the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Another famous author or another famous ascetic of the early generations, he said, if only the kings and the princes, if they knew how we really and truly feel the tranquility that we have in our hearts, they would be fighting us with swords in order to obtain it from us. In other words, if they knew the treasure that we have, if they could really see it, instead of being illusioned, disillusioned by this world, then they would know that the real prize is the prize that we have of Iman and tranquility. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, the greatest scholar that this ummah has seen after the time of the early ancestors, the pious Salaf. He said, there is in this world, there is in this world a Jannah, a garden. The only way to obtain the Jannah of the hereafter is by entering the Jannah of this world. And he who does not enter the Jannah of this world will not enter the Jannah of the hereafter. And that Jannah is the worship of Allah.